Now, I'm going to challenge you. First of all, we're going to work out how much energy we need to break this apart, to get the activated complex, and then to form uh, the product. So these are reactants, which we break the bonds between chlorine, chlorine, and hydrogen, hydrogen, and then we form hydrogen chloride after that. Come on, so I'm going to challenge you. So how, will, how do we write this out? Do you want to copy this while I'm busy? Or do you want to say out loud? So what am I going to break first? Let's say we break the hydrogen bond. So I have to break the hydrogen, hydrogen bond, and I must break the chlorine, chlorine bond. How many of these molecules do I have? One, so I will need one set of energy. How much energy is that again? Let's go to our table, 432. And for the other one, 240. So I simply add those energies together, and what's that total? 672 kilojoules. But this you know from grade 11 already, so that shouldn't be so hard. Let's go to the formation of the new bond. Which bonds do, which are the new bonds that we're making? Hydrogen and the chloride bond. So, okay. So, which bonds must we make? Hydrogen and chlorine together. How many of them? Two of them. Okay. Someone is asking me, while I'm busy showing you this, I'm going to make one of those bonds, and now I'm on those bonds. Someone is asking me, how do we know the amount of energy needed to break the bond? It will always be given to you in these tables. In examination, should it ever be asked? So, how much energy do I need for that one? 428. And for that one? 428. Good. So, there we have 428 and 428. Okay. So, this energy was there. The beginning, no. We put this energy in because we want to break the bond, and this energy will now be given out as you saw in my previous picture. So, what is the energy difference between these two? Energy in, energy out. Energy in, energy out. Does everybody understand again? Break that bond, that's the energy you need. Break that bond, that's the energy you need. Where do you get this information from? From your bond energy tables. And then that is the total amount of energy that we need. Now, making new bonds. Now, which are the new bonds we make? We look here, and we see these are the new bonds we're making, and that is the number there. That's the amount of energy that I'm going to need to make the bond. And now, what's the difference? And the difference between the two energies, the energy change, we call heat of reaction, or change in enthalpy, it means, and this is the formula, it's energy out, which is that amount there, minus the energy in, which is that amount there, because we put that in to break the bond, the new bonds are formed, we give out energy, and it's called final heat, which is energy out, this is this amount, minus initial heat, which is that amount. Heat is simply another word for energy. So let's see what that comes to. Do you see that? Do you think you understand that? Okay, and then we have an answer. So this is the way the energy changed inside this reaction. And this looked like energy, more energy was going out and coming in, which means, let me make sure, yes, 856 was the energy that we give out. This energy is 672, which means it is energy plus so the system gained energy, and therefore delta H is greater than zero. Okay, now why not make life more complicated for you this afternoon? Some of you may shout, no, this is already too difficult, but let's look at a different way of dealing with the same kind of problem. Next, we also get what we call in uh, chemistry thermodynamic tables. And here we have a table such as a substance, and this you will find in activity 5.1 as well, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You have the substance like water as a liquid, hydrogen as a gas, and the oxygen molecule as a gas, nitrogen molecule as a gas, and then ammonia as a gas, and these are the heat of reaction, in other words, the energy that goes in or out during the formation of water, we get so much energy. Minus mean going out. And when we have this, there's no energy change, no energy change, but we have a new product, there's also an energy change once more. Someone asked me earlier, what is the reaction? 
Well, I think I said earlier, we can just answer that question quickly. A reaction is when we take a set of substances, chemicals, molecules, whatever you want to call them, compounds, and we break the bonds between them and we rearrange them into a new substance or a new compound or a new molecule. In short, a chemical reaction is when we take reactants and we form new products from it. But it must be something new. Sometimes those products are uh, reversible into reactants, but not always. Sometimes it is just a one-way street from reactants to product. So products are always new rearrangements of the atoms, like you saw earlier, from the reactants. Okay, let us go and continue with what we have on the screen. Now is the question, and the question at the bottom is asking us that we should prove that delta H for the reaction, nitrogen molecule plus three hydrogen molecules give us two ammonia molecules, and that is equal to minus 92,22 kilojoules. We need to prove this. Now, how do we do this? I can get hold of my pen, then we're going to try and show you how it's done today. Okay, let's go. Let's look at the sum again. It says, I'll write it down for you on my whiteboard, and then we'll see whether we can quickly answer it for you. You tackle it with me. If I, I have then a nitrogen molecule plus three hydrogen molecules, and this is normally a reversible reaction, but let's just complete it and say we need two ammonia reaction, uh, ammonia molecules. There we go. So what do we need to do now? We now need to use the table, and from the table we must be able to see uh, what are the change in the energies, and we write those energies down. So okay, so how do we do that? First of all, Let's look at our, at our screen again, just to make sure that we have all the values. For the nitrogen, for the nitrogen, the value is zero. For the hydrogen, the value is zero. And for the ammonia, the value is minus 46,11. So how do I do it? First of all, I write it as follows on my whiteboard again. I say delta H for this reaction, that is what I must determine, is always equal to the final heat or final energy minus the initial energy. That is the first step that I need to do. Now let's quickly see what is our final and what is our. This is the final product and these two are the initial ones. So that's the final one, and these are the initial reactions. So, which means that these values must come here at initial, and those values must come to the final one. So let's continue. What on the screen again was the value for this one? I think I put it in brackets quickly. Minus 46,11, 0.11, and this was naught, and this one was also naught, according to our table. Let's just look at the table again to see uh, where we are. Notice, naught for that one, naught for that one, and minus 46,1. Okay, let's go back to our whiteboard. Therefore, I can now say I need two of those amounts of energy. So it's two molecules of ammonia, which is minus 46, comma, 1, 1. And then I minus that, is that minus over there, and how many initial uh, substances do I have? Two of them. So it will be naught for nitrogen, I put in brackets, naught for nitrogen, plus three times naught for my hydrogen, and that is simply minus, if I multiply this, 
to 2 minus naught which is minus 92 comma 22 kilojoules there we go and that's my answer so I think I've answered the question note carefully it's final minus initial it's the product minus the reactants those values that I take from the table and that's the way I answer that question